So you might think the hardest part about being a data analyst is learning SQL, understanding databases, using advanced statistics. But no, the hardest part about being a data analyst is actually, wait, hold on a second. Before I tell you that, I've been a full-time data analyst for over a year now. Partially that responsibility is coming from delivering quality work, but another part of it is that I'm willing to accept some additional responsibilities. But with these increased responsibilities comes increased exposure to more and more business users of the company. So I'm an analyst, but on the other side of the company, there's business users making business decisions. And these business users just don't understand some of the technical mumbo jumbo. They don't know the difference between SQL, R, Python, or a hippopotamus. They understand the business, which in my case is health insurance, to its core. They understand the products we offer. They understand the members we serve. They understand health insurance at a much deeper level than I probably do. So analysts have a somewhat limited idea of what the actual business does, but they need to know what it does. And this isn't just something you could come into a job and know the business to its core. But this is something that you gain with time. But the analysts do need to have a good enough understanding at all times to be able to effectively communicate with business users. And so if you haven't been able to tell by now, the hardest part about being a data analyst is explaining technical things to non-technical people. And it's going to be one of the most important parts of your job. Let me explain why. All right, principle number one, always keep the why in mind. It can be easy when you're an analyst to focus solely on the work that you need to do. Focus on the SQL that you need to write to pull the correct data. Focus on the code you need to write to format that data and get it into the right output or perform some statistical model on the data you have. You always have to keep in mind why you are doing that. For one, it can help you formulate your analysis and get you to that north star that you need to reach to actually give the output to the business users. You have to be able to know when to ask these people, okay, but why are we doing it this way? Or why do we need to know that information? Or why do we need to pull it for these members? Whatever type of business you're in, you always have to try to decipher what they're telling you and put that into the context of what you need to do as a data analyst. And on the flip side of that, if you're explaining to them your analysis once you're done or you're writing up an output that you're going to send in an email to them, you also have to keep this in mind and not keep things too technical, but also put that into the context of what they were asking you in the first place. So let me give you an example for this one. Let's say at my health insurance company, there's a certain group of business users that want to know more about people in Delaware. They want to know Delaware Medicare Advantage members, which are just an older population and they're mainly funded by the government. They want to know why the patients in Delaware are more sick than the MA patients in Pennsylvania. And one of the people that you're working with has some clinical experience, maybe they were a doctor in the past, and they suggest that you pull some emergency room data for these members. But you know as a data analyst at this particular health insurance company that you might be working at that you actually don't have access to that data. You need to bring that up to this business user in a way that doesn't make them feel stupid but it also isn't too technical to understand. So you might say, well, in order to do that, we would have to pull that directly from the provider specific data source, and we don't have access to that. However, what we can do is pull similar data from claims, and we can probably best estimate the same thing that you're trying to, to do by pulling that data in the first place. So you need to think about how you can explain things to them in a non-technical way, but also take in what they're saying and decipher that into technical things on your side. All right, so the second principle is going to be visuals and output. You always wanna make sure that you're putting things into a friendly format that non-technical users are going to understand. For the most part, when you're putting together visualizations, you don't want anything that can be confusing at all in those visualizations. You wanna walk them through what is important specifically in the visualizations or the output you're giving them. For an example, let's say you're trying to put together a visualization and you want to put as much information as that as possible. You want it to be such good information that they can gather everything they need from one singular visualization. So you take a stacked bar chart, one axis represents the number of members, each block of the bar chart represents one particular part of the population, and then on the other axis you have a line chart that represents the average amount of spend that they've had over the past 12 months. And so the y-axis is in dollars. The uh, other y-axis is in number of members. Across the x-axis, we have months. There's all these different colors representing different things. There's a key at the bottom with a bunch of different colors. There's 10 different groups for each month. So it's just so much to look at. Now, intuitively, as a data analyst, you might look at that and say, yeah, it makes sense to me. You can see the number of members in each month. You can see th this group's increasing month over month and their spends increasing, blah, blah, blah. 
but to a business user who's not used to looking at visualizations like this, it just might not be as clear. And you don't want to send that out and say, okay, here you go, uh, make your decision based on this. No, you're going to want to either firmly explain that to them, be very clear what's happening, what you're seeing, and how they can apply that to their specific situation that they were asking about in the future. But the second and probably better option is to just make those visualizations more simple. Separate the visualizations into two separate things, or put it in a table format, or put it in a visualization and a table format, as well as a write-up below it explaining what you're seeing. This can also be used in building dashboards, which is another thing you're going to be doing as a data analyst. Try to keep visualizations simple, limit the amount of options, make it very clear what they're seeing, and don't try to money anything with anything too fancy, because the fancier you get, usually the harder it is to understand. But hey, before I get into the third and fourth principles, check out the two links in the description down below. I have one to my newsletter where I send out occasional updates with the channel. I also send some additional tips there when I think of things. And the second one's going to be to my Discord, where there's a bunch of like-minded people who are into statistics or into data analysis, and they're talking in there all the time, so check that out. I think it'll be a very valuable resource for you. All right, but number three, speak their language. This one's gonna be pretty simple. But I just need to reiterate because it's so important. Avoid using technical words that they're not going to understand. Like I said at the beginning of the video, they don't know SQL. They don't know code. They don't know how much work goes into some code that you have to write to do what they want you to do. Try to keep that in mind when they're explaining what their needs are so you can give them an appropriate timeline or an estimate on how long the analysis is going to take or if things are just simply not feasible with the amount of work that you have on your plate or what your company resources offer you, tell them that. You have to take what they're telling you as business users, turn that in your own head into the technical side of things so that you know, and then be able to explain to them, here's why this is not possible, here's why you can't do this, or here's how long this is going to take. Another thing with this, try not to use acronyms that everyone's not going to be familiar with. I don't know about every other company, but at least at my company, we use a lot of acronyms, like things to identify members of our health insurance plan. Not everybody even knows what that identification code is called. So just keep that in mind when you're using different terms that analysts might be using that business users aren't using. All right. And the last principle, but certainly not the least, be the business user's guide, not their dictator. You are there as an analyst to help business users with their questions aim them so they can make the correct decision to help out your entire company. You are not there to tell them how to do their jobs. Likewise, they're not there to tell you how to do your job. They're not going to tell you how to perform an analysis. So don't take your analysis and say, this is what you need to do. Tell them the story as you see it. If they don't see it the same way, they usually have extra context that you don't have. But check out this video next because I go into more detail on how to be the guide and not the dictator. See you over there.